Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Good. It's good. It's good. I like that. Did you just say that? Okay, yeah. now it's me like, yeah, hey guys, what's up? <laughs> yeah, I just say, yeah, yeah. 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 Okay. yeah. Okay, we're at page four, right? Yeah. It's Larson again. It's me? Yeah. It's Nikki, listen to me. I'm serious. You don't have to worry because the video is really good. Nice. Cool. <laughs> Wait, 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 wait for me. Wait for me. But what? Oh, no. <laughs> oh. So we're going to start on Inspired and then also going to. Guys, I just called the one who's doing it and they're logo. What's the difference of it? I just called the one more logo. I just texted me. Ah. Action. Come on, Nikki, it's 2020. It's not like making uh, music videos is hard anymore. Okay, we need to uh, uh, one. Yeah. Oh, Camera. Oh, the camera should be higher. Right? Yeah, yeah, I fix it. Just sit. you sit like this. Don't move. Yeah, I don't know. This is Steven, uh, better known as Hansama, and so he is the ID carry for Rogue. Uh, he is a very energetic guy from France. Who I will say he is very into self development. He loves to find different ways how to be consistent with routines. Isma is like the psychological coach uh, of the team. He's been uh, with work for like one year, I think, and uh, I've known him since uh, um, like three to four years. My time in Misfit uh, in 2017, uh, he was there uh, with us. I, I still remember when I met him the very first time. He came out of the room and, and, and he came to me very, very shy so you're like hi hello and not even eye contact or anything like that so from that moment i was like okay he's he's very shy so we'll see how he takes like all the knowledge about sports psychology or performance or how to improve steven is also like a really shy person i would say he doesn't really talk that much but uh, i don't know what should i say it's so like weird questions. I mean, it's kind of weird because his personality in real life is so much different from how he acts in game. He is really aggressive in game and he's like saying like fuck enemies <laughs> and stuff like this. And in, in real life, he's more like this uh, chill guy that like, like laid back a little bit, right? Uh, but in game, he's like really aggressive. He loves those aggressive peaks. Uh, he likes to dominate over his enemy. Uh, so it's... Uh, it's it's a bit weird, right? It's like it's like alter ego, you know. <laughs> it's not true. Hans is not talking at all in game. He uh, he talks like decent amount. He talks a lot. I think ADC kind of has to be vocal right now because um, he knows the best. Uh, like when he wants to recall, when he wants to uh, do do some plays, because I don't really see his gold or like uh, sometimes I don't know exactly the damage he can output. So <clears throat> it's nice that AD is talking. I don't think it's possible for a team to be good or like play around bot lane when ADC is not talking at all. I mean, if Hans wouldn't talk in game, then we would lose, I think. And then the first meeting I had with him was, was, uh, was very interesting because he, you pers the first impression is very important, right? And the first impression I had from him was he's a very shy person. He's very in his, in his own world. Not a, not a problem with this, right? But just in his own world. So then we have this one-on-one -on -one, uh, talking about performance, talking about what he wants, his goals, his just kind of getting to know each other. And I realized like he was very, very into kind of the performance side of things, of competition. So he was a tennis player before. So he knew very well why sleep is important, why nutrition is important, why physical activity is important and how these things affect him positively or negatively. At the first time, 
it was very new what Isma bring uh, to us the the knowledge he has. Uh, I think in the beginning it was hard to get into a routine to and uh, to um, to um, to believe what he says is right, you know, because I'm like very young and I'm like. Uh, um, like self-talk, uh, like uh, brain hack stuff. Uh, I'm like not really uh, believing it 100%. I'm like more focused uh, in the game. So it was like that in the beginning. But uh, over over the months uh, pl uh, working with him, I started uh, developing uh, nice, uh, well skills. So Isma is the performance coach for Rogue and he basically helps us with stuff outside of the game uh, like physical training, some, uh, some good habits before the game to get, get into the feeling of playing. So yeah, he's more like a coach outside of the game. I think the biggest misconception about sports psychology is um, that things are, I don't know, like kind of there is a guru who could uh, fix things. Like, of course, many organizations are looking for sports psychs to fix issues, to have kind of band-aid approaches. I think the biggest misconception about sports psychology is that people think that there needs to be something wrong with you to work with a sports psychologist. Because it's not just for solving problems or fixing things, it's looking for how do I get to perform at those times that are important to me and how can I how can I perform to my potential that I have inside of me? I would say the misconceptions go, go in that direction. So just everything is magic. So you apply one technique and, and that's all. I think this is one of one other misconception is just that we come with techniques or with strategies how to improve. And, and it's more than that. It's just more build a culture, try to take the person as a or try to take the player as a person, try to help them to, to look their worth, that their worth is not on how much they achieve or how much or how well or bad they play in the game, but it goes beyond that and just kind of develop li life skills and relationships. Steven is the only guy on the team that I can talk about with anime about. Uh, it's a bit lonely otherwise, but uh, Steven has my back. How's this uh, anime taste? <laughs> And he has watched way more than me, so he knows all the good things and all the bad things. So he tells me what to watch and tells me what to not watch. <laughs> Everything that you could talk about life or anything or performance, he will transfer it into anime. So he will say you could be asking him about any psychological skills, self-talk or something. Like, yeah, I saw it in the anime. So he's a very, um, he's a very happy guy, I will say. Each uh, teammate has this type of model that inspires the other teammates. Finn is uh, giving that vibe that you can't really tilt him uh, too much. Um, in the reviews, I don't really see him uh, tilting or outside of the game. Inspired gives that vibe that the game is, uh, that it's important to keep the fun in the game. Uh, or Life is just gonna be too boring around this uh, environment. Lassen gives that vibe uh, that you have to be consistent, work hard, and don't give excuses. I'm not sure about Oscar. What does it give me as inspiration? I guess it gives me as in inspiration communication. You have to actually talk to teammates in order to know uh, them to know what you actually think or feel like. He's very communicative, I think. And yeah. <laughs> but that's uh, that's uh, like that. Uh, they they are like that. Uh, I feel like. So I like really good psychological lessons. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Because many of the animes are about life and about how to be better, how to build relationships, how to, you know, come back from setbacks. So as well, I would say, I was actually thinking to have a research, like kind of a fun research based on anime. So try to develop understanding of the psychological knowledge or learning experiences coming from anime and how this is related to, to competition, to performance. 
he obviously joined the team later than the rest of them and it's always like difficult I think to to be the the odd man out in that sense to be honest I think it that he fit in very quickly and within a couple of weeks he was like part of the team already I don't think it was any difficulties adjusting with Steven I think he's very good at playing with a lot of different players I think he told me that last year he played with five or six different supports over the course of one year so I think he knows how to adapt to a new team pretty fast and to new players he's very humble but also very explaining in what he wants to do so there's no kind of uh, difficulties communication with, com communicating with him uh, back in season four or season five I was actually playing Dooku with Steven already uh, he was a very talented uh, Draven main who was basically carrying every game and he was a very nice guy so it was nice to play duo with him and then uh, two years later he became uh, a star at world meanwhile I was still a random and then, but now we're playing together which is uh, quite a nice uh, story yeah. well I worked with uh, Isma a long time since uh, the day he arrived to Esport I believe Esport I think uh, when he arrived to to my team first he didn't really have uh, all the old teams it was his first time and uh, everything was new to him now he understood the game uh, he's playing uh, the game uh, often when I see the room <laughs> see him in the room uh, with his Tristana probably inspired by my Tristana at words but <laughs> My name is Bernadette Raamaker. People call me Bernie here. I am from the Netherlands. I have a background in psychology and sport and exercise psychology. And I am a sports psychologist here at Roke. And I'm a former speed skater. So Bernie reminds me when I started in esports in 2017. Um, so she comes from traditional sports. So she didn't know anything about esports until I introduced this to her. It's very interesting because it's like seeing myself when I started. I'm very curious about what this is, I'm very curious about things that can be done differently and what can be changed in the environment. And um, the desert doesn't provide anything. Yeah, that's not a desert. Yeah, this one. So there are two completely desert areas. Uh -huh. Those two are the same, right? Yeah. Yes. So something that we integrated as part of uh, the culture that we wanted to bring to, to, to the split or kind of to this year uh, was specific situations where we asked the players to commit and to the things that maybe they are not used to it. Like for example, one of these group activities we do are uh, a board game tournament. Uh, the goal for it is to disconnect a bit, I guess, from the game, which is, I think, good. I think the first edition ended. I'm not sure even who won. So far, I have um, been first placed at it. <laughs> I also played like the first time in my life Catan and the first time in my life with Uno as well. <laughs> so I'm uh, expanding my horizons. So those are the chances of the dice to roll in this, to, to get up eight. Oh. It is something we do like around every two weeks where we have like one specific day, usually Tuesday evening and play like a board game that uh, he chooses. Like the games we play are like uh, Settlers of Catan, we play chess. We played uh, different card games as well, Monopoly. So it's uh, games where you have to, to think, where you have to communicate as well between each other. It's a very competitive game, but all of them love it. Maybe not Casper. If you put people in a pressure situation like that, um, you still see each, them helping each other. When we played, for example, Catan, they didn't, not everyone has played, had played before. So even though they were definitely competing against each other, they were also helping each other in terms of, okay, I wouldn't, I wouldn't put my street there, I would put it somewhere else because it doesn't really make sense. And they explained why, um, which I think is really valuable as a team. I was asking people for advices, but it turned out they were giving me like bad advices to just win against me. So I felt a bit, uh, I felt like I didn't even play this game yet, right? So then I wanted to learn it a bit and I played like a bit online. And then we played a few more times after together and then it was like more even and I won like sometimes. But they get very competitive and you know, some of the board games could destroy relationships or friendships. Uh, so sometimes uh, they overdo it or sometimes they are try harder like Nico or maybe Oscar that they play in their PCs just to train and they ask me when are we going to have the board game tournament? Yeah, mainly it's me, Lars and Hans 
and Freddy and Nico playing. Uh, I would say Nico is the worst one. <laughs> he does really stupid stuff playing this game. Like, uh, I mean, last time I said I'm never playing with him again because what he was doing was like just too difficult. But well, it's nice to relax sometimes and have some team bonding. It could be team bonding sometimes, uh, but some board games are like uh, made to play against each other. So I'm not sure if it's team bonding, just fighting each other. They are definitely super competitive with each other. They don't like losing, like every competitor, right? So they will do everything that they can to win the game. Another activity that we do consistently is um, um, physical activity. So we introduced it as well at the beginning of the split, at the beginning of the year. Um, and it was, the aim of it is just based as well on well-being, based on how we can help them to improve their cognitive abilities or basically their brain um, kind of skills or you know, just to put it short so how good your brain can help you to improve in the game itself without really notice it. We just have some like uh, trainer and uh, we do the exercises with her. Uh, now it's like warm so we go to the park and we like run around and do some like exercises. Before it was at home so it was a bit uh, a bit more like boring. I think everyone likes it except Casper because uh, he's a bit lazy, but I feel like he uh, starts liking it actually now more and more. It has a lot of benefit, uh, honestly. I can't uh, list them all, uh, but I think it's uh, been a very good plus uh, moving from one a week to two a week. This split, I think it had. It had helped us a lot for our performance in practice. But as well, it serves a purpose to interact with each other. So again, if you notice it, there is a trend here in terms of relationships. So just create and facilitate an environment where they can interact with each other, which is very important. Um, just try to keep them together. The goal of the physical training is to be, well, good in shape, uh, give us more energy towards every day. Uh, and um, well, positive vibes. I think it helps me uh, to just stay like me more focused and not like tilt um, in games as much. Uh, to just stay calm more. Uh, in general, I think it's nice to to do some sport or so just anything beneficial for you outside of games. So even when the games don't go your way, you always feel like you maybe move forward, you know, as a person. Give me pass, I need to run there. Are you running? Yes, I want to walk with this what? mosquitoes everywhere. No core? Yeah, give me key. Core. Yeah. I mean, I've never seen a spider running his whole life, but um, now mosquitoes are here, so he's actually running for the first time in his life. And the third thing that we do very consistent is something that we call performance insights. So performance insights is basically a space for them to get to know more about different areas of performance. Something that we have in mind, standings, solo queue ranking, power rankings. Yes, we're in the first place. This could be just a distractor, right? I remember the last, the last game that we had. Yeah, everyone is happy, great. But we still have another nine games to go. Learning how to have a good sleeping habit, nutrition, um, we had, a, we had a talk about Stoic philosophy. We have some activities about, or kind of a space, it's like 20, 30 minutes where we tell them about meditation, about focus, focus of attention, why it's important to, to, to train attention, basically. So we base a lot in terms of mindfulness approaches and meditation approaches and how this could be related for their own development. What well, the purpose is of all these activities is reducing the stress, getting the team to bond with each other, create new to topics to talk about, um, letting them face challenges outside of the game that they can learn how to cope with that and also implement inside of the game. So it's more a kind of an education session for them to just get what you, what you want. Just if you find it interesting to you and you can apply it, just do it. And I think what is also important to realize is that we are dealing with a very young group of people and they will need to learn how to be good humans as well. So everything that they learn inside the game, they can transfer outside of the game, but also the other way around. Uh, it's for uh,
when we empty the meat. Give me, give me this. After a good first half in the LEC summer split, Rogue sits comfortably in first place with a 7-2 and two record. With the newly implemented bye week, they're looking to recharge for the crucial second half of the split. So we had a week off. There was no competition of the LEC, so everybody had some time that they could spend however they wanted. Well, some of the players, like it was asked to the players to just chill for a little bit for a few days. Optimally, it would have been that they go home. Um, it was said to them that there is a long season, so they need as well to recover. We have implemented uh, kind of strategies for them to not burn out, but still this, is, this could be an issue. Uh, so some of the players really didn't play the game at all. I went out. Mm. The next day I was just chilling. Um, then I went to Poland for like two and a half days, I would say. Um, so I had to go like fix my teeth. Um, and then I also met with my family. And then I went to Warsaw to meet with my friends. Um, and then, yeah, next day I just went back to Berlin. <laughs> uh, and then the rest, like, kind of stay here and they stream as well. I think it was very important as well for them to just be in contact, contact with fans and as well just they have, like, kind of some um, connection as well with the community. And one of the days in that week we used as an opportunity to go together to a climbing park. Um, unfortunately, we had a really difficult situation in terms of the weather. Um, the weather was definitely not on our side. It rained the whole day. Wow. <laughs> I think maybe all of us should grab some stuff from the car and then we can move to the barbecue directly. Okay. Do you have Casper? Is that your hoodie? Oh, it's so bad, dude. Okay. Lucky you. Lucky you. Oh, the short side. Yeah. We have your backpack. Yeah, come on. That's why do you feel me? Get the fuck up. <laughs> <laughs> but how lucky is it, Tim? The day we're going climbing, it's raining. Unlucky. It's so fucking unlucky. It's the best off week ever. Next week is going to be sunny. Actually, yeah, yeah, that's unlucky. It's nice to play, like, uh, play the league when it's raining. And it's nice to be outside when it's sun, but now it's like opposite. Bonding. It's a good weather. Holy shit. Good weather. Really a kid. Hey, I let the... Uh... <laughs> I will just like to go back to the car. I want to take my headphones on your neck. I didn't take it off. That was a prank. That was a prank. That was a prank. It's on tape, Steven. All good. No, that was a prank. Don't get me wrong. Good prank, bro. I thank you. I hope it was funny. There's more footage and stuff, of course. More footage. Why are you filming us still? Like, shut the fuck up. These are all on like highest right now. Why? Because you guys might be down. What we did there when we arrived, we just hoped that the rain was going to stop before four o'clock and then we would be able to climb for about, I think it would have been two hours, two and a half hours. So we started out with the barbecue, had a really nice time together. Um, Thomas was actually in charge of cooking the meat and we just bonded over food, right? And then when we realized that the rain was definitely not going to stop and um, we would not be able to climb because it was definitely not, well, it wouldn't have been safe for such professional athletes. We decided it would not be a good option for the players to go climbing. But yeah, it would have been really good that we could climb. We couldn't, although they went, they walk around the, the park and they said that it was uh, not that high. The trees weren't that high, so it might be actually really good that we didn't, we didn't actually do it. And then when they came back, we did a team activity where uh, we 
had everyone tie a string around their arms and it would be looped with someone else so their arms would have been would be tied together and the goal of that game is to free yourself without cutting the cord or taking the string off your arms. What do I do with that? But where do you stop moving? Try it. Try what? Walk over. It's not easy. It's not that easy. I'll take it back. Okay. 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 Can we do it with legs or not? No, don't say. You can move. Oh, you can step oh, over oh, it. Go under. No. Move around. Move around. <laughs> what? But there's no way we can like bend it, like twist it. No way. What are you doing? Go, go under. Go under me now. Oh. Can we go under? No, I can't. Wait, wait, wait. Really? Can you just? No, you can't. Wait, can you? Wait, wait, wait. Maybe I can. Wait. It's possible. It is possible. It is possible. It is possible. It is possible. <laughs> Hey, viewers, how can we do? Be creative, guys. Are you seeing that still? Okay, wait, wait. Don't touch it. If I go like this, it doesn't make sense, right? Even if it's like this. He's never seen it before. It's not gonna work, right? Only even getting it. The game works. Oh, what? Can't I? Wait, wait, wait. Yeah, try. Maybe it's some of the... Where to go now? Where the fuck do I go now? It's really outside of the box. Go under. Okay, we are. No, we are not. I'm fine. Hands like this, it will not work, right? It's always the same. Yes. Um, hey, let's try that. I, I put both hands in. Can't I like step through this? Works. Okay, one more minute and we it's give a, a hint. Try it. No, no, no hint. Let us try. Let, let me go through okay. this. Let me go through oh, no. this with both hands in. Okay. okay. Come out. What's that? Uh, it's under, right? Yeah. 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 Let me go through this. Go down. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I can talk. I feel like we're not using this project. Like the original. Use the rope to make a loop and create and use the other loops. What? Loop? Yes. What is loop? Create a loop and use the other loops. What is loop? Loop. A loop? What is loop? A loop is a, what you have around your wrist or a, like a little loop. It's like kind of. I think he, he needs to be more huge, no? Wait, let's try this again. I think this might be good. Okay. It was like this, right? And now I need to. No, you can't do this, right? This I don't feel very free, right? I mean. It's just. It's kind of <laughs> I really don't feel free. <laughs> I'm just curious yeah, about how how okay. this how this, this was created. Yeah, like because you are like kind of stuck. That's step one. Step two. Yes. Okay, maybe if you go to the okay. beginning three, position. Yeah, like we just back. have to <laughs> It doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> but how did we do that? I was like, it looked, it looked like it was like stuck. You put the loop through this. Am I yeah. hand? They, and now you have to put enough, this thing over this in thing, <laughs> and we're out. <laughs> it's unwinnable. I'm it's really sure easy. Hey guys, you say easy? Easy. <laughs> really easy. And the purpose of that is looking for creativity, looking for how can we put two people together. Um, they have one goal together. They can work together. They can maybe even ask for help with the other duos because everybody was in a, in a duo. And we, we basically look for problem solving and problem solving skills. Disaster. Do you like my home snacks? Show me. This is a chicken. Wait. Can you not put it on your phone and then you have your phone next? That's uh, that's uh, a good, no? good idea. Eine gute Idee. Yeah, eine gute Idee. During the off week, I was mainly streaming in France, 
and uh, well, I noticed again that I have uh, still uh, got a French fan base, uh, quite a decent one. It seems like inspired it a lot from what I saw on Rogue YouTube channel, and now he's out to eat. Yes, he eats so much, and uh, I used to cook him a lot of food, but uh, I kind of stopped because this guy, uh, I'm I'm worried that he might get fatter because of me. <laughs> Well, I feel like I interact more with my viewers, so that's good. And uh, I like to make uh, like an edu educational educational uh, stream. No, je voulais freeze la lane. I wanted to freeze the lane, but he just took the cannon. <laughs> Okay, I will freeze like that, just show, I will show you guys the strategy. Okay, I should have threw there a bit, but uh, hopefully it doesn't die, so it freezes. Okay, I will do another try. Oh. <laughs> okay, it still focuses, uh, it's freezing now. I think the biggest development I experienced from, from Steven that I, I could observe while I was working with Steven in Misfits was based on how he interact with people, how he just came out of his own bubble uh, and tried to share more experiences with the rest of the players. Hey, hey, Rogue. You are currently the art stream with the most people. Tien, I need help. Do you hear me? I need help. I think right now, He's better at not thinking that he needs to be a perfect player, not thinking that he needs to reach perfection. But that was something that was coming as well from, from, from his time in Misfits when I was working him, with him. So he was, he's a very driven player and he, wants, he wanted always to be perfect. Han Sama is the man who hasn't moved, the rock of this Misfits lineup. He has made everyone foolish for forgetting about ADCs. The only team that has gotten a perfect split so far has been Fnatic, and I mean, as long as it wins now, hands, we will make sure that it stays that way. Misfits have shown no major weaknesses. Is Fnatic just another speed bump? on Misfits Road to a perfect split. Mickey and Hamsan are doing what well, little they can. The Nexus Tower is being dropped down. Fnatic defeat the undefeatable Misfits. They didn't just defeat them, they destroyed the undefeated Misfits. Uh, after our Fnatic game, we completely broke <laughs> apart. It felt quite bad. It felt like uh, you went from being the top to being one of the bottom because we lost so many games against both of teams as well. Uh, but I think uh, I think uh, I know the mistakes we kind of did, so it was like a good learning experience. So yeah, I mean, there's I guess is there a lot to, to talk about this uh, time? I feel like it's uh, a sad time because we could have uh, made the world. I think if we played better towards uh, the split. But uh, unfortunately, we didn't. I think part of part of my as well learning and development has been to experience hardships. Like for example, in Misfits, when we were 9-0, and then we won I think three games after, like kind of the last part of the split. We almost didn't make it to playoffs. Um, so it's I mean it was just basically um, kind of lack of a structure that we have put into place. Maybe some com complacency complacency. Uh, there's a lot of lessons that I learned through that year, not only this 9-0 experience. Uh, hopefully I can uh, not uh, make this strategy happen again. <laughs> At this point we had a meeting with the players as well and then I showed them, well, I can take from my experience uh, from this 9 year and Steven knows it really well. Uh, that we need to be careful because these things can happen, right? We're in a good situation right now, but it's still, according to the culture and the environment that we're building, is just to try to focus on what is in front of us because the rest are the, just distractions because this 9-0 was just a distraction and we didn't know how to approach it. 
just wanted to highlight one of the examples that I have. I talk about what I know. I talk oh, about what <laughs> So 9-0, the first five weeks, and then we won only three games afterwards. Um, and this, so this can happen, right? And it's if you get complacent, if you let these distractors to hit you, this will happen, okay? The difference between the 9-0 in Misfits and right now, I mean, we're not 9-0, but we're very ahead. Uh, it's uh, how people have been willingly to help each other, have been able to kind of make efforts in building relationships, um, and as well, like kind of being genuine about what is happening at the moment. We have built a good culture in terms of everyone is very aware of what needs to be done and as well a culture where we have some strategies in place that just help us to to keep everything together i feel that one of these things is the egos so of course we have egos but i don't think they are getting into the way of us trying to develop um, so we just try to keep it real and try to to keep our stance in terms of we might not be better than any of the other teams, but we're doing something right. Most of the time we expect ourselves to do better because uh, we know our potential now or uh, the result we made already, so we, we have higher expectations. I don't think we went too cocky something. We have the goal to try hard more, I guess. So there's no like difference from 0-0 to 7-2? Are we 7 two or? After the first half, nine, nine. I went into. You know, sometimes I forget. <laughs> I don't really care. <laughs> so was that like the mindset of the team that nobody cares about this? No. I mean, I don't know. It's just for me. For me, I. I sometimes forget about it. I just focus on what team I'm playing against next week, which I didn't do actually in my misfit time. I feel like in my misfit time, my mistake was. One of my mistakes was to not care about which team I face that was a problem. But I think I need to visualize which team I'm going to face a week before so I can prepare into that specific team because each player has different playstyle. All the team have different playstyle and I need to play accordingly to it. It is very important to have a common goal. It's very important to be aware what the common goal is. And that needs to be in the picture, that needs to be there. But the most important thing for us, and at, at least for me, and it's something that I'm trying to share a lot with them, is that the actions are the most important thing. Because we know the goal, but the most important thing that we need to do every single day is how we behave and how we act according to values, according to what we are committed to. And this is, this is something that I feel everyone is into it. And I think that's, that's, uh, that's huge on the next episode of Rogues. <laughs> We're like Rogues. But it's easier also if you put your elbows against your knees. Yeah. Is that team building? That's what we do in the uh, exercise, yeah. Yeah. There's too much sand. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Please follow us for more episodes and remember to go Rogue.